In this movie, we'll pick up where we left off in learning how to work with and apply bones to, actually, 3D content. We've imported the stock walrus that comes with Anime Studio Pro, and we've created a bones layer. If you'd like to open this particular lesson and take a look at it, go ahead to the working files and open file 0802 using 3D Part 2. The next step now is to add bones to our character and look at some things that are going on. Now something that I haven't explicitly pointed out yet is that 3D content in Anime Studio Pro behaves a little differently than 2D content does. What I mean by that is if we drew a circle on a layer, I could grab that circle and move it all around the layer. In 3D, you don't have that option. 3D requires you to actually move the layer itself and rotate the layer. There is no provision to actually move your content around on the layer. The layer becomes the actual item to manipulate. I have our bone layer down in the layers palette. Let's go ahead and open that and name it something a little more meaningful like walrus bones. We'll move our walrus layer into that. And if you're new to this series and have skipped the bone section, I would encourage you to go back and look at that from this point on because I'm not going to cover some of the details about putting in bones. We'll just do it and assume you've already learned some of that. So we have our walrus in the bone set. If I highlight bones, we have the ability now to go ahead and do our add bone tool. And I'll click and draw one down there by the chest and then one up to the top of the head. When we use our manipulate bone tool, keyboard shortcut Z, now when I move the bones, we get some nice motion going on with uh, Willie the walrus here, or whatever his name is. But we've got some issues, and that is if I wanted a profile view or a three-quarter view, how would I do that? Well, we haven't really needed to think about bones in 3D until this point in time. Bones do not think in 3D. Bones actually only think in two dimensions because they were created not for 3D specifically, but kind of an added bonus that you can use them there. They're made for 2D content. So if I wanted to see this walrus in profile and then animate that, how would I do it? And the way I would do it, you might uh, not know right off the bat. You might think, well, let's just rotate the bones layer. Well, that's not going to work, and I'll show you why. I'll go ahead and grab our layer transformation tool. I'll rotate on the, the uh, Y axis there. With the bone layer selected, you notice I can rotate that layer, and sure enough, the walrus does turn with it, but notice how the bones themselves have become very, very thin. They aren't going to bend forward and backwards. In fact, if I tried to bend it, it would just flip our walrus around into very strange directions, and I won't do that. What you need to do instead is rotate the walrus layer, and then we're going to have to tweak the bones to get that to work a little bit. So let's come down to the walrus with the same tool selected. I can now rotate him to a three-quarter view or a full side view. We'll go with a little bit of a three-quarter view. But coming back to the bones layer, we're going to need to move it around because if I select the manipulate bone tool and move this, we get some rather bizarre movements this way. We need to refine that and make it work a little bit better for us. So I'll go ahead and grab some of our bone tools over here. We'll grab the translate bone and simply drag this back to where the hip is. Then with the rotate tool, I can go ahead and rotate this and get it pointing a little further up the body. And at this point, I'm going to add a few more bones to make it work better for us. Come back to our add bone. I'll drag one up to the nose here. I'll also drag some right about here in for our flipper. And then I'll go ahead and drag one out for the back flipper. Then we know that we have to change the linkage on them, and we'll have to do the bone select tool for that. I'll select this bone, and then I'll go ahead and come back and grab our linking tool, keyboard shortcut P, or parenting tool, if you want to remember that. And I will connect it right to the one there. I'll select this back flipper, and I will parent it to the hip bone there. And now when we use our bone manipulation tools, we get a little more suitable behavior. If I wanted to detail this up, I could add bones in a slightly different orientation. We move the flippers, and that's behaving kind of as we would expect. So this is how you start getting a little bit of animation into your 3D content. 
Again, the bones only behave or work in two dimensions, but this is how you can kind of fake that three-quarter or that half dimension. In our next movie, we'll take a closer look at how to create believable or work with believable shadows with imported 3D content.